Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Omega DeVille Chronoscope. You can see this 42 millimeter stainless steel chronograph on our website, watchyouwant.com. Purchase it there. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. You can also click on the card in the upper right hand corner of this video at any time to see our full listing for this watch with accessories included, high resolution images, and of course, details of pricing. Now, on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that the chronoscope is is one of the most baroque members of the DeVille family. This watch has a dial and a case that simply doesn't quit, each one uh, styled to perhaps an avant-garde level. It's one of the most visually distinctive members of the DeVille family in the modern era. Now, 42 millimeters across the round of the case, that's perhaps a hypothetical measurement because the flanking side at three o'clock is dominated by crown guards, the crown, and two chronograph pushers. Now, it is remarkably slim, however, being only 13 millimeters thick. This is one with a sloped and stepped bezel that will easily slide underneath a tight sleeve or a dress cuff. Now, from lug to lug, it has a reasonable measurement of 51.5 millimeters, which is approximately a standard measurement for a full-size men's watch in this day and age. Now, the watch has good substance on the wrist. You can feel the heft, but you know it's not precious metal and it's not overbearing. Bearing. This is a wearable watch, entirely in steel. It's matched to a very impressive sculpted strap. Now, I say this is a sculpted strap because it incorporates a couple of features that really set it apart. It's unconventionally sheer cut on its flanks and bolstered to a beautiful extent, not often seen on Omega straps, which tend to be a little bit flat in character and one-dimensional. The combination of that sheer cut as it approaches the lug and the dramatic flare of the bolstering means there's a very gradual visual transition from strap to lug. It's very nicely done. Now the strap itself is of exceptional quality. As the taper ends, it actually becomes quite slim, so it'll curve around the soft underside of your wrist, and it's matched to a superb quality, twin trigger actuated deployant clasp. You can see that it's beautifully polished inside and out, and it features Omega's clever minderless tuck, so you can actually take the excess slack of the strap and tuck it underneath that secure twin trigger clasp. Beautifully built, it ensures a very clean aesthetic when the watch is on the wrist because of all the slack being taken in underneath the clasp rather than atop. I will say that the Chronoscope family is one of the most adventurous in Omega's recent catalog. Now, it has a little bit of the look of the DeVille Rattrapont, but this one is significantly thinner than that watch. Again, 13 millimeters here, so it does sit lower on the wrist. It has a little bit more inherent elegance to it. This particular example features what I believe to be the sportiest of the dial variations available. It almost has a little bit of an air of a 21st century Paul Newman to it with the tritone of silver, black, and red accents on a watch that is very sporting in its presentation. Now, it also features stepped lugs and bezels that are just remarkably textured with unusual choices of character lines. You can see how there's the step and the fluting to the lug as it approaches the bezel, but then it also tucks down and sort of wraps around the flanks of the case, it almost looks like folded silk. It's nuanced, it's intriguing, it's unusual, and as far as I know, this particular treatment of a lug that flows up and then down and around is entirely unique to the chronoscope. And the watch has a dial with immense detailing. You can see that it has depth, it has color, it has character. All of the hour indices are applied, and Omega, when it debuted this watch, became one of the very first to experiment with the controversial high-impact multi-date, wherein you can see the preceding and succeeding date, as well as the current day's date. One thing that is not arguable, however, is that this is one of the most sophisticated movements to have been placed in an Omega watch during the mid-2000s. Now, it is a column wheel vertical clutch coaxial chronometer chronograph. You can see Omega calls this the caliber 3313. It's based on the Frederic Piguet 1285 Abouche, and it's modified to suit Omega's needs, principally by including the coaxial escapement developed by George Daniels. It's a little piece of independent horology in a mass market watch. Now the 1285 about differs dramatically from the 1185, well known for its use in Blancpain, Audemars Piguet, and Vacheron Constantin watches. The 1285 is a little bit thicker. In this application, it's free sprung. It operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, not 21.6 like the 1185. Now it's also a little bit thicker and hardier. This watch really does pack a great deal of content mechanically as well, because while the movement is beautifully finished and definitely one of the more 
handsome movements to have been used by Omega during the 2000s. It also offers refinements like a 52-hour power reserve, again, solidly more than the 1185's 40. This is a watch that has a lot of interesting merits to it, aesthetically, technologically. It's also a little bit of an historical anomaly, as it's one of the most adventurous and outgoing styles to have found its way into the traditionally conservative DeVille line. This is a watch that will never be mistaken for anything else, even within Omega's own catalog. And as such, it has to represent a high watermark of Omega adventurous design in the mid-2000s. You can see it and you can buy it on our website, watchyouwant.com.